Let's talk about trauma and how trauma affects or shows up in our behaviors in dating or in marriage. A lot of people are behaving according to their past trauma and they don't even know it. We all had traumas in life, relational traumas or in the family, as children, and we created a response that could be completely opposite to overcompensate yeah, things. To, yeah, and that becomes our new normal. What is normal? Who says who? Yeah. Compared to what? Yeah. You know, your normal is... I mean, you get to define what your normal is. Yeah. And you're not, you are, all of us have a normal behavior pattern mm -hmm. that we don't question because it's a part of your DNA. Mm -hmm. It is because of choices made in the past, specifically for the, for the context of this video, we're going to talk about uh, trauma responses. For example, I probably based upon the evidence and the fruit in my life later on, was probably molested or uh, inappropriately touched when I was a, a little baby or a toddler. I don't remember it, but my mother uh, shared things that gave some pretty conclusive evidence that something happened. And in subsequent years, you know, as I was entering puberty, I inappropriately fondled a, a few of my sisters. And the shame and the guilt that I went through mm -hmm. and I repented, I confessed to my parents, I made it right with this, with my sisters and all is well. I went through the healing process and, and the, the deep the deliverance and, mm -hmm. and just the com complete acknowledgement where it's not painful for me to talk about. However, my response to the, the trauma of the guilt and shame and the beating myself up that I went through as, you know, severe regret over what I did mm -hmm. caused the trauma response of compensating in the opposite direction of being super safe around women and children where I wouldn't hurt a flea on a woman. And in that process of that re compensation uh, response to, the, to that traumatic memory of what I did and the mm -hmm. extreme uh, anguish that I went through over being very severely sorry and repentant and wanting relief from the, the burden of what I did, I, I shut down the whole farm in the process to where I wasn't even pursuing girls to date them. And, you know, by borrowing some confidence in that area from Carlos uh, Campos, who helped me, you know, find Irina and identify her and even officiated a wedding, I was able to get married at 41 years of age. 40. Yeah, 40. <laughs> I get the numbers mixed around. <laughs> and um, so that that conditioned response has continued to be, to be something that I've had to navigate through even in marriage. Mm -hmm. And so as I recognize now that if a man isn't pursuing girls, doesn't or or not pursuing his wife if you're married. Mm -hmm. First question to ask is what happened mm -hmm. that you're comp that you perhaps are compensating for as a re trauma response to get as far away from that scenario of your past as absolutely possible. You want to be anything but that, yeah. and so you're going to go into the opposite ditch, which is a trap in itself. Yeah, and an an another scenario that I could share with you is uh, a man who shall remain anonymous. Um, who was sodomized by an older man when he was a little, young boy. Mm -hmm. And um, his, his, his uh, concept of what might have happened there was the trauma response of making sure that he's not seen as gay, perhaps, or that he is like definitely interested in women. And he became and developed a sexual addiction of womanizing women mm -hmm. uh, you know, like there was no tomorrow. He even, he even openly shares that. Mm -hmm. And so he too is not happily married to one wife. 
and recognizes that his that past pattern was also a uh, behavioral compensation uh, response yeah. to something that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. now, I'm sure there's hundreds of yeah. different scenarios that we could toss out there that something happened, we make an agreement and to make sure that never happens again or that I'm definitely not labeled as that again. Mm -hmm. And then we go hop into the opposite extreme and we in in the process shut down the whole farm instead of seeking where's the balance in the middle. Yeah. And so one one thing that I am planning to implement for myself as an experiment, if nothing else, is to be more, uh, uh, dare I say, a passionate pursuer of my wife. Well, mm -hmm. okay, so I need to cultivate some things that aren't really my normal. Mm -hmm. So that could look like having some uh, uh, an array of my favorite photos of my hot wife to remind me, like, and, and to stir up more of that, that inner passion to, mm -hmm. you know, to desire, pursue, and seek her. Mm -hmm. And we have... Um, amazing intimacy yeah absolutely off the chains intimacy mm -hmm. and but there's always room for refinement right yeah. and so i'm always going for the next level of refinement next level of intimacy mm -hmm. and and desire and passion because there is no arrival point yeah. you could take the 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 best most passionate lover on earth and compared to the perfection of, of a holy god even that person still has mm -hmm. another level to discover and to go after. So how to, how to break uh, uh, what is a normal behavior pattern? It, it requires some creativity, you know, mm -hmm. maybe seeking counsel from others for ideas, you know, studying and reading yeah. uh, wiser heads, God's word, uh, wise teachers in the area. Mm -hmm. of what are some creative ways to provoke or prompt a different behavior response, create a different scenario? Uh, to remind yourself daily that you actually want to be this mm -hmm. instead of what you in normal and not what comes natural. Yeah. So, and it it also takes us into the next depth of things, you know. And it doesn't matter if you're man or woman. We all had experiences in the past as children, as teenagers, that is going to change our trajectory and journey into relationships, into dating, and into marriage and intimacy and beyond. So finding those traumas, finding where the root of it is, asking the question, why do I do things this way? I wonder, where is that coming from? You know, and then obviously, um, as Jesse mentioned, what is normal? Who decides? what is normal, right? And also, uh, well, the good measure is to go and measure everything to the word of God, to the Bible. And if it's not found, like he said, find a wise person who can find those things for you or, or says, oh, actually I did the research on this. You know, a lot of times, like if you go to a rabbi, they're a really wise man and uh, who can explain certain things because they go deeper into the word of God. And we say mention rabbis uh, specifically because of their depth of knowledge in the, the Hebrew. Yeah. The Hebraic uh, understanding wisdom of and, God's word. Yeah. And the uh, language itself. Definitely not negating the value of pastors. And, right. And uh, Christians who study psychology and how the right. human psyche works so yes. that they can understand how to help people navigate through those things yeah well if you are in the friendship or heading towards dating a relationship marriage in the marriage any of those levels of relationships we need to also understand each other right so the way that I understand things and the way that I do things would be different from Jesse. So getting into that a point of sitting down and really understanding each other so that you're not blaming each other for certain things. Why are you not like me? Or why are you not doing this? I want this this way. And it's, it's, it's important to understand why each person has certain patterns, why they have certain um, what do you call it? Neuro, path, neuro passageways. passageways 
because it's been created from all of our experiences, right? And if we want to rewrite it, it takes certain things and changing your habits, routines, and different things to rewrite that. And, and the noteworthy thing that I will mention, if you want to write something down, is even after the trauma has been healed, mm-hmm. you've gone through healing and deliverance, mm-hmm. you're good, you're cool. Guess what? If your brain has been wired yeah. and trained a certain mm-hmm. way where those neural passageways mm-hmm. are telling you this is normal yeah. and your behavior is a certain way because it's been conditioned to be that, mm-hmm. even if the pain is gone, the healing and the deliverance have been placed, yeah. but now it, requ- it requires a retraining of habits and the mind. And that's basic renewing the mind to God's word 101. Mm-hmm. If you want to get real with it, uh, the discovery of what that, you know, the dynamics of what that looks like and, and, and the specific application to your scenario. Okay. Well, how do you do that? I, one thought I had was to study two extremes and usually God is found in the middle somewhere yeah. in the balance of things and when we say balance we're also talking about flow consider Mm -hmm. like a bicycle moving forward it has to be in motion in order to be balanced and upright right if it goes into the right ditch or the left ditch not good Mm -hmm. but on the path moving forward Mm -hmm. the bicycle stays balanced and on track and so that's that's kind of the picture i'm painting for well we were asking ourselves well what is normal yeah. Says who? Yeah. Compared to what? Yeah. And- <laughs> so I, I, I just analyze, okay, this extreme, this extreme. Probably mm-hmm. the path is in the middle. Mm-hmm. And so that's the journey we're on is to revisit what is the middle for us? What is the balance for us? Yeah. What and is, then pursue that. What is normal in the, also in different things? You know, like we talk about how to be best friends and find the, each other before you even start dating like we rewriting the path for you or a strategy for you to get to know others before you go on a date and then you find them recognize them you choose each other and then you go on a date you know there are again what's normal for you might be different what's normal for others but what's been working for multiple people could be a great thing to look at as well yeah your normal might not actually be normal it might just be a conditioned response that's a compensation for a past trauma yeah and you know not all traumas are going to be very apparent until you get into a relationship that triggers them yes and that's where things explode and fall apart for people so for the singles it's very important that you be very honest and raw and real with yourself Mm -hmm. and identify okay this happened in my life Mm -hmm. and then what is my behavioral pattern or response yeah. around the opposite gender mm-hmm. uh am i like you know am i in two one of the two extremes or are you in the middle mm-hmm. you know moving forward in balance yeah so we can continue talking about this but you get the idea and if you want to know more you can always visit us on other videos that we do or click on the link below that we have to um invite you to our community where we go deeper into those things and we rewrite our passages you know and things that we created in our life and help you write a new story help you write a new story yeah so hopefully this conversation was helpful for you be blessed and we'll see you in the next video right.